My name is Melissa Shields. I am a nuclear medicine technologist who is now a lecturer here at the University of Newcastle. I teach nuclear medicine as well as uh, some subjects in medical radiation science. Before I start talking to you about my education journey, I'm just going to explain what nuclear medicine and medical radiation science is. Medical radiation science is made up of three different areas of healthcare. The first being radiation therapy, which is not actually taking pictures of people, but it's more treating people with large amounts of radiation um, to help cure or um, shrink their cancers that are inside of their body. The most common area of medical radiation science is radiography, where, and a lot of people know about what radiography is because it combines a couple of different types of scans that most people have had in their lifetime. This includes general x-rays, CT scans, MRI scans and ultrasounds, where most of them use radiation to take pictures of um, people's insights, basically. The last area of uh, medical radiation science, which is nuclear medicine, um, which is my specialty, what we do is a little bit different to general radiography and x-rays. Instead of using a machine to take pictures to put that radiation through that person, what we do is inject the radioactive liquid into a person's veins and then take pictures of the insides of that person using a big camera called a gamma camera or a PET scanner. Um, it doesn't hurt that person. The radioactive liquid does not make them feel any different at all. And within a day, all of that radioactive liquid has disappeared from the body and the person doesn't know that that's happening. Where I am standing now taking this video is the radiation, the, the radio pharmacy lab at the University of Newcastle. And this is where we teach our nuclear medicine students how to prepare those radioactive injections. And they practice every day how to um, make that radioactive injection. So when they go out into the workforce, they know exactly what they're doing. So back to my education journey, I grew up in Newcastle and I went to primary school, high school and university here in Newcastle. I loved school, especially high school, um, because of the sport, basically. I was good at my studies, at um, the subjects that I did, but I wasn't that good. I could have probably been better if I didn't do all the sport that I did. I was lucky enough to be a very good runner when I was younger um, and I was lucky to represent the school at Zone Regional and CHS Athletics and Cross Country every year. So I missed out on a bit of school because of that. So I think that's where my time management skills were formed uh, because I had to juggle my homework with my training every day as well as trying to catch up on the work that I missed when I was out at the carnivals. I liked science when I was at school. I really enjoyed science. Um, and I also enjoyed English and modern history as well. I was, um, I had to try a lot it, um, in science and maths because um, I wasn't that good in some of the subjects. So it really took a lot of time for me to grasp all the concepts and um, get relatively good marks in those subjects. And even now, I don't enjoy the physics side of nuclear medicine, unfortunately, um, but I know enough to get by and to explain it to my students um, when they need help. And um, I'm constantly reading and updating my knowledge on that area. The important thing that I think about high school is that you need to balance the subjects that you choose. You need to choose subjects that will uh, help you in the future with whatever future path you want to take, but also choose subjects that you like because it's so much easier to study and do well in a subject that you actually enjoy doing and enjoy learning about. Um, once I got to about year 10, I sort of had an idea of what I wanted to do when I grew up, when I was leaving school. I wanted to be, do something in healthcare and I liked radiography, so I did that as work experience. But near, in year 10 as well, I had to have a nuclear medicine scan because I was a little bit sick. So that really opened my eyes and introduced me to nuclear medicine and I really enjoyed it and I knew then that's what I wanted to do. 
But luckily for me, nuclear medicine was going to be offered for the first time at the University of Newcastle uh, when I left school. So I was um, in the first classes at um, the University of Newcastle in nuclear medicine. And um, from then on, I have loved it. I loved coming to uni, I loved studying, and I really found something that I was passionate about. And that is what that is what's ha helped me in my career is that I am so passionate about this this area of healthcare, and it makes it easy for me to learn and study in this area. Once I finished the university, I went to Wollongong. I left home and worked in Wollongong for a little while. It was hard leaving home, um, but I knew quite a few people that I worked with and that I was living with, so it wasn't too bad. After Wollongong, a great opportunity came up for me at the Children's Hospital at Westmead when they, that hospital was built. So I worked there as a nuclear medicine technologist for quite a number of years. And then I worked in two other different departments around Sydney. I've also, in that time, I got married and had two children. So they are, my girls are now 11 and 13. And once um, the hardest thing for them with me working has been this new job for me because we had to move from Sydney to Newcastle for me to become a lecturer here. And that was really hard for the whole family. They were leaving all of their friends at school and we were leaving all of our friends. But it has all worked out for the best and we all live, love living in Newcastle now. Ever since I left uni and started working, I have kept on learning basically. Just because I've finished studying doesn't mean that I've finished learning. I, there is so much to learn in your chosen profession and if you just keep reading and watching programs and um, learning about the profession that you love or something that you love, whether it's a topic or what you want to do in the future, you keep learning new things and you will eventually know a lot about that topic that you are interested in or you love. Now, for me, when I learn, it, I need to write things down. So whenever I'm reading something or watching something, I always have to write down what I'm thinking and what I'm learning and for me to remember it because if I don't write it down, I'm not going to remember it. And all of us learn different by different ways, but I had a notebook with me whenever I'm studying and whenever I'm working still now, I always have a notebook with me so I can write things down so I can remember them. Now, after all of these years of not studying, um, I am now studying again. I am doing what they call a PhD here at the University of Newcastle, which means that I have to do a lot of reading and write a mini book basically about the topic that I'm really interested in. Um, it is hard to do because I have to work full time as well and be with my family a lot. So I'm just doing little bits at a time. And you know, I find that if you do a little bit of something all the time, eventually it will all fall into place and um, it will happen for you. I've always been very lucky to um, be surrounded by people that inspire me and help me throughout my career and schooling, except for one person who was one of my science teachers at high school who said that I was not good enough in physics to do this chosen career and I'd never be any good at it. So unfortunately for me, she was wrong. And um, so if somebody does say things like that to you, just try it doesn't mean one person's opinion does not mean that it's going to not going to work out for you my first nuclear medicine lecturer here at the uni when I first started studying um, was an inspiration to me she taught me how to be a great nuclear medicine technologist and now I'm lucky enough to be working alongside her here at the uni because she still teaches nuclear medicine here and now she's inspiring me to become the one a great teacher of students in nuclear medicine and medical radiation science. So back to nuclear medicine. Have any of you heard about nuclear medicine at all? Have you had a nuclear medicine scan or have you had a other radiography type scan? So a CT scan or an ultrasound or a general x-ray if you fell over and hurt yourself? We do lots of different types of scans, but the main areas of the body that we um, take pictures of in nuclear medicine are the bones and the heart. 
We also do a scan called a PET scan, which looks for certain types of cancers in the body to try and figure out what's wrong with the person when they are sick. So your challenge is to have a look on the internet and see if you can find some nuclear medicine scans, whether they're a bone, scans of the bone, so a bone scan, or scans of the heart, which doesn't really look like a heart, unfortunately, because we slice it up into different angles, or a PET scan, which looks like a body, an outline of the body. And when there's something wrong in our nuclear medicine scans, most of the time it looks quite bright and really obvious. So have a look on the internet and see if you can find any nuclear medicine scans and see what they look like. Thanks for listening. Bye.